welcome everybody to Dickens Community Virtual Library Research Row. Our goal here is to enhance the Dickens Project with research on the life of Charles Dickens, his work, and times in the Victorian era. First stop is the CVL Dickens Library, and inside you'll find information both about the Community Virtual Library and some of Dickens literature. You can use your camera to zoom in, or feel free to walk inside these rooms, look around. Um, you can take the books that are inside. When you touch them, you are given uh, a link either to the text or sometimes an audio recording. You can walk into any of the research rooms to view the slideshows, the presentations, or you can bookmark um, the spaces to return later. So I'm standing outside our CVL uh, library, and there's a slideshow that tells a bit about the Community Virtual Library, if you're not familiar with what we provide in Second Life and other virtual worlds. So our second stop here is a museum research room called Dickens Home and Marriage. This researcher discovered that Dickens had quite a troubled marriage, and you know, often we um, we find it difficult to separate the artist from the art, and sometimes we become critical if we find some um, disheartening information about various artists. And Dickens wrote some very heartwarming and beautiful tales, yet his own home life was very troubled. In fact, his marriage crumbled. After bearing 10 children, Dickens' wife found herself separated, and he even tried to shut her up in a lunatic asylum. It's quite a tragic tale. This third room is um, a pharmacy during Victorian times. And all of us, of course, are very aware of Tiny Tim, a very beloved character from A Christmas Carol. And people have often been puzzled as to what infirmity he actually suffered from. And when you look at this research, most researchers now agree that most likely Tiny Tim had tuberculosis, and possibly he had rickets as well. This was very common during the time period in Victorian London. This next one, I'll stand at the corner so you can kind of look in or even walk in the prison room should you choose to. Life was really tough in Victorian times, and um, people caught breaking the law were certainly treated poorly. Some of the famous prisons include the Cold Bath Fields Prison, the Clink Prison, and Newgate Prison. There were debtors' prisons, and it was very difficult to pay off the debt of your crime. So many of you are aware that Dickens stories were published in installments. We might today call them curated, and people would wait with excitement for the next story to come out. One of our librarians, Elise Denevent Jones, she is the um, assistant director at the Community Virtual Library. She presented a research project, and if you cam in, you'll see it's called Victorian Digital Curation and Article Analysis. And she explains what um, digital curation is and the differences between then and now. You can also see that we've put some information here to our sister project, um, the Antique Pattern Library, which, which curates antique patterns from historical eras, manuscripts, and patterns for the furnishings, the clothing, so that we can see what it really looked like in the in the Victorian era. And as librarians, we really strive to help people understand how to find historical accurate uh, patterns. So it's a perfect partnership for uh, simulations in virtual worlds. We'll move to Dickens and the Law. Feel free to walk inside the room if you choose to. Dickens and the Law was created by Sue Moon Magic. She's here today. Sue Moon is our head of reference at the Community Virtual Library. In the days of Dickens, lawyers didn't have to endure as many years of school and no bar exam to pass. Many studied law in law offices under experienced mentors. Dickens was not formally trained as a lawyer, but he worked as a law clerk, a court reporter, and a reporter for Parliament. 
Sue Moon is a law librarian um, at Tulane University. So a lot of our researchers choose projects that relate to their own skills, interests, and knowledge. Now, Dickens was a foodie. We're going to move on to Victorian era food. Dickens was amazing in the ways he would um, share passages that were detailed descriptively on food. If you walk into this room, you can see some research on food in the Victorian era. You might think that they had a very poor diet, um, but actually sugar was scarce. Their food was actually more nutritious than some might think because in abundance they had beets, onions, cabbage, apples, cherries, watercress, um, and their uh, bread was stone ground, highly nutritious. A lot of you will remember in A Christmas Carol when Scrooge meets the ghost of Christmas present. present. Here's a description. Heaped up on the floor to form a kind of throne were turkeys, geese, game, poultry, brawn, great joints of meat, sucking pigs, long wreaths of sausages, mince pies, plum puddings, barrels of oysters, red hot chestnuts, cherry peaked apples, juicy oranges, luscious pears, immense twelfth cakes, and seething bowls of punch that made the chamber dim with their delicious steam. When educators bring students into historical simulations, they often like them to dress the part because it just helps you to get the feel and the flavor of that time period. And our next presentation room here is clothing in the Victorian era. Bethany Winslow's here today. I'm gonna to turn the mic over. Bethany, you wanna say a few words about your presentation, which I love um, in this room? <laughs> Sure, thank you. I really had a lot of fun kind of doing the research and um, <laughs> looking at the Victorian Albert Museum online. But um, so that's just one of the sources because um, there are certainly a lot of people who do um, historic re recreations of clothing and are a great resource. So there's some great references on there. But I had a lot of pictures that um, I don't know. It was, it was, it was, I really learned a lot by putting this presentation together. Um, it was a lot of fun. That's basically it. I'm glad you mentioned that you learned a lot. It, I think that's what's amazing about these historical simulations. Every year when we come, we learn more about it, and you dig deeper into the era, the times. I'll let everybody walk around the corner and, and gather here in front of our next presentation called Dickens and Disability. Dickens wrote quite a bit about disabilities in his various stories. Of course, the one example is Tiny Tim. We're very familiar with him, but he did include others. Um, there was a social stigma. It's quite apparent in his writings. And I think um, her research points out that, you know, we still deal with social stigma with disabilities today. Reading historical fiction brings to life not just the facts, but the feelings of the people. Uh, we have more empathy when we get to know a character through historical fiction. So we're going to move on next to the Victorian London room. What was London like in uh, Charles Dickens' time period? And if you zoom in, you'll find a London map that shows you what the streets were actually like in Charles Dickens' days. Certainly, we're all aware that during Dickens' time, there were very cruel working conditions. Um, and he describes them well in his writings. He describes what it was like to, live, to work in those times. And he knew this from experience. People of all ages, because the Industrial Revolution was just beginning, uh, Dickens himself was familiar since he worked in a blacking factory when he was 12 years old. His job was to paste labels on the jars of shoe polish, and he worked long 10-hour days. And let's walk across the street over this direction. Um, I'm very happy that we now have some Spanish resources at the Community Virtual Library. She is, um, speaks Spanish, and she has added Spanish resources here. She's a medical librarian at the University of Puerto Rico. And her room is called La Medicina en la Época Victoriana. And our latest research room is just next door here, if you'll follow me, to the Great X 
exhibition of 1851. Marie's very excited about this project. What a time to have been alive. Inventions were just blossoming as the Industrial Revolution was just taking off. And the Great Exhibition of 1851 was fascinating. It was the Crystal Palace, which was made of iron and plate glass. And it took place from May through October of 1851. And more than 14,000 exhibitors from around the world gathered in its 990,000 square feet. All right, what I'd like to do next, you have just seen 13 research rooms here at the Dickens Project. We have a librarian in um, Hawaii who works at, one, at the University of Hawaii who has an example of entering the story here at the Dickens Project. And she took Charles Dickens' story of the old curiosity shop and created it here at the Dickens Project. The place through which he made his way at leisure was one of those receptacles for old and curious things which seemed to crouch in odd corners of, of this town and to hide their musty treasures from the public eye in jealousy and distrust. There were suits of mail standing like ghosts in armor here and there, fantastic carvings brought from monkish cloisters, rusty weapons of various kinds, distorted figures in china and wood and iron and ivory, tapestry and strange furniture that might have been designed in dreams. The Old Curiosity Shop. <laughs>